Just short of a year ago, I paid £3,599 for this MacBook Pro M3 Max. Did I make a mistake? Today I'm gonna to be telling you how my experience with this MacBook Pro has been from a filmmaker's perspective, coming from an Intel laptop, including the battery life, which was a huge selling point for me. And that's why I'm gonna be working for my favorite coffee shop over here. Let's see how it holds up. Do you guys still do iced coffee? Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. My motivation these days is different. I mostly beat on myself, but I want to sport a couple things I pray for. Got my coffee, got my toast. Let's get into some edits. And while I do that, let me tell you why you might want to consider getting this too. If you don't know, this is my first MacBook. I used to use this Razer Blade 16 Advanced, which is pretty high spec and still really good for video editing but with some shortcomings. Now, I used to be an absolute hater of MacBooks. I used to think that the only thing you were buying was a logo. And to this day, I think I was right. That is until they introduced the M chip series. M1 has propelled Mac growth over the past year, outpacing the industry with the Mac having its best year ever. When the M1 Pro was released, I started seeing some impressive benchmarks, totally smoking Intel laptops on the performance. And then you had the great screens, the battery life, and the workflow with your iPhone. Now that piqued my interest. Still, I decided not to buy it. One, because I didn't have the money, and two, because I wasn't 100% convinced. Then, they came out with the M2 Pro. And that one made me believe. Introducing M2 Pro. M2 Pro cranks up the performance of our Pro systems yet again. The powerful media engine of M2 Pro rips through the most popular video codecs, dramatically accelerating Pro video workflows while using very little power. So that's M2 Pro. By then, my bitterness towards MacBooks was pretty much gone and my interest was high. But I had just bought the Razer Blade, so I decided to postpone one more year, wait for the M3 to come out, and then buy the M2 at a discounted price. And that plan sounded great, right? Yeah, that was until they announced the M3 chips. And those packs, damn. Introducing M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max. They feature a number of groundbreaking technologies and show how far Apple Silicon for the Mac has come since the debut of the M1 family. M3 Max is up to 80% faster than M1 Max. That's a giant leap in performance in just two years. It's simply the world's best pro laptop. And with the M3 family of chips, it gets even better, making it a monster upgrade for anyone still on an Intel-based MacBook Pro. Now, let's turn to MacBook Pro with M3 Max. For users with extreme workflows, like AI developers, 3D artists, and video professionals, it's an absolute beast. And video post-production work on the highest resolution content in apps like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, or Final Cut Pro is an absolute breeze. And all models of the MacBook Pro deliver the same phenomenal performance, whether plugged in or on battery unlike many PC laptops. Immediately I said, fuck it, I would just save a little bit more, sell some of my stuff and get the M3. Not only the specs were mind blowing, but they also made it black. Introducing MacBook Pro in space black. Which, by the way, isn't really black, it's just dark gray. It's still beautiful though. But anyway, I got it and I was super excited to start using it. I almost immediately started working with the MacBook instead, trying to get the hang of it, which had its annoying parts, things that I much prefer on the laptop, but it wasn't so much of a learning curve. Now, at this point, I was using the MacBook daily for editing, watching videos on YouTube, scripting, sending emails, and etc. I used it to coffee shops, trains, airplanes, and just made the whole process so much more enjoyable. I didn't have to worry about bringing my charger with me everywhere, it didn't really get hot, and it was very quiet. And connected to my iPhone seamlessly. Going through my edits was and still is a breeze. I shoot on the Sony FX3 mostly on 50 or 60 FPS at 10 bit. I can stack six of these videos without making any proxies and it will still play it without dropping any frames. Editing photos on Affinity while listening to Spotify with like 20 Chrome tabs open was of course not a problem at all. I edited a ton of videos on it and really put it through its paces. The instance I felt it lag was when color grading my clips with the Hanser Pro which is a very demanding plugin, but apart from that, just incredible. This MacBook has actually changed the way I do my work and how flexible I can be. 
And if you're thinking about getting one of these and say you have a Intel laptop or a pre-M chip generation MacBook, I say definitely go for it. You will not regret it. On that day, I edited two Instagram reels, started the edit on my Muay Thai project, scripted one YouTube video, sent out a bunch of emails and watched about one hour of YouTube content and still had 62% battery left. And to me, that's impressive. Before this MacBook, I could have never done that. All right, after that coffee and about four hours of work, I gotta hit the number two and go home. But before I go, if you wanna check what is probably the fastest and cheapest SSD solution to pair with your MacBook Pro, watch this video right here. Thank you for watching. Love you. Bye.